Here we are on episode four, I believe, of Create a Player vs. EA, and today we'll take a closer look at my Sugashan O'Malley creation. I was planning to have a lot more of these episodes released by now, because they're quite a bit of fun, but uh, I've just been busy and falling behind on getting content out, so I appreciate your patience, and uh, let's uh, hop into this one. So first off, we'll take a look here at the O'Malley model that EA has provided for us in UFC 4. In my opinion, this is the worst of the four models that we've examined so far in this series. You guys may or may not feel the same way, um, just personally I don't think they nailed O'Malley's face. And I can't really put my finger on why, I think it might have something to do with the eyes. Um, just from certain angles, I don't think it looks all that much like O'Malley. Now, I'm not saying that it's bad, and I'm not saying that mine is better. I just think that with the tools that EA has available, that they could have definitely improved on this model. And now that we've had a quick refresher, let's examine the model that I came up with a little bit closer, as well as going through the formula for anyone interested in copying. Right off the bat immediately there's a little bit of a problem here. Uh, O'Malley's a 5'11 bantamweight but there's height limits to created fighters in this game and the limit for bantamweight is 5'9 so if you want his height to be accurate you're gonna have to turn him into a featherweight. As you can see here I have him at 136 pounds which is the weight that you have to make for a non-title bantamweight fight but obviously the game recognizes that as a featherweight so you're just going to have to keep that in mind. For his stance I went with Brow. There's probably better stances I really honestly didn't look too far into it. I just picked this one because the the low hands basically. I don't think that's what his foot placement is and I'm not sure which stance the in-game model uses either, so you might want to pick a different one. I also put him in the southpaw stance. Uh, obviously he's very good out of both stances. Moving on to the hair, we have eyebrows 3, facial hair 6, and no body hair. Uh, pink hair color, but I'm shortly going to go through all the different hairstyles that we can use for O'Malley. Dark brown facial hair as well as eyebrow hair and the body hair doesn't matter. So now I'm just going to cycle through some of the many 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 hair options that you can go with for O'Malley. Um, if you follow him on Instagram or watch his YouTube he's always switching up his hairstyles and hair colors. And when you're making created fighters that's actually a good thing because the more unique things that a person has about their appearance the more you can get away with. It's really hard in this game especially to make uh, accurate, generic looking people, I guess. You have to really nail the face sculpt, otherwise it's not going to look very much like your subject. Whereas on this one for example, let's say you don't think I did a very good job on the face sculpt. Like you don't think it really looks all that much like O'Malley. When you add in the tattoos, when you add in the facial hair, when you add in the crazy hair colors and unique hairstyles, all of those little things add up to help uh, someone associate the look with O'Malley. And that's what I mean when I say you can uh, basically get away with a little more on ones like this that have a bunch of uh, unique features about them. And I went through a lot of hairstyles here, so uh, if you're going to copy this formula, feel free to choose whichever one you like. Personally, my favorite is the one I think that they modeled after Uriah Faber, number uh, 57 I think. Just because it's the closest hairstyle to uh, what O'Malley ends up usually rocking with in the cage. Although uh, the afros are pretty cool too. Now we will move on to the head sculpt numbers. Uh, so we start with head template number 37. Um, and just uh, pause the screen anytime you need to uh, copy down these numbers. As we're going through all of the head sculpt, uh, I'll just throw some pictures up on the screen uh, showing you some of the photos that I used for reference when I was doing the head sculpt. And then you guys can have a closer look and comparison and see how well you think this model turned out compared to the real thing. Considering the limitations of the creator in this game, I would say I'm probably somewhat satisfied with this one. 
I like to use head template 37 quite a lot and one of the little things that annoys me about it is the mouth on it is like always permanently downturned so it it always looks like the guy's pouting and you can't change it whatsoever. But all things considered I felt it was okay enough to uh, include in this series so here we are. Moving on, brown eyes, uh, body. Skin tones either 4 or 2 are probably your best options. I ended up going with 4. Uh, as far as the bodies go, you guys know how I feel about them in this game. They're trash. Because of O'Malley's frame, the only options you could probably go with are 1, 2, or 3. I ended up going with 2. Number 1 is the Diaz body and it's got kind of too long of a torso. Number 3 could work. Um, uh, two or three both don't really have long enough necks um, so pick your poison basically moving on to the tattoos we've got another 100 tattoo special here on my regular created fighters that I post here on the channel I try to limit tattoo numbers to way below 100 but for this series you guys know I like to try to make these models look as accurately as possible so sometimes it's necessary to max out the tattoos and sometimes it's hard for me to explain how I composed each of these tattoos, but we're going to do our best here. We're going to start here with actual facial tattoos. O'Malley has the word Suga written above his right eyebrow, so we went with Kugali font for that one. The next one we've got is a tattoo on the hairline on the left side of his head. We went with text number one. It doesn't really matter because you can't really read it anyway, but I just went with text number one and I duplicated it. The second one I flipped horizontally just to make it slightly darker. Shapes number 170 for the star on his left cheek. Then we go with the heart on the right cheek. Now both of these are much bigger than they should be. Uh, his actual tattoos are much smaller than this, but this is the minimum size we can make them. So we can't really do a lot about it. Moving on to the chest tattoo. Uh, this one's a little bit complicated, but I tried to make it as simple as possible. So he's got an owl on his chest. We went with animals number 22 for the head of the owl. Then I went with fantasy number 1 to compose most of the color of the tattoo. Now there's probably definitely better ways to do this, but uh, I went with this way because this particular tattoo has a lot of the teal and pink color in it. So what I did is I basically replicated it six or seven times and then just positioned it in a way so it looked close to uh, the teal and pink color. And then we have a bird shape on top, which I would actually recommend laying that down first and then putting the colors on top so you can follow the pattern and then move the bird to the highest layer at the end, which is Celtic Tribal number 11. So here you can see full color, bring it down to no color, and then uh, just bring the opacity up slightly so you kind of get the bird shape. Of course you don't have to do that or you can try doing it your own way, but that's basically what I came up with. These intricate tattoos are really difficult to duplicate in this game. And I couldn't get too crazy on this chest piece because I had to save tattoos for the rest of the body also. Moving on, next is the phrase float like a butterfly, sting like a bee on the right hand side of his body. We went with Clairvaux font for this one. I won't select each letter here, but I'll just uh, rotate this calf back and forth so you can kind of see uh, in what orientation the words are written. They're all kind of flat except for sting uh, is on an angle. Probably the best thing to do, I don't have a picture handy, is just to have a quick look at a picture of O'Malley's side and you can kind of see a better look at the uh, orientation of the tattoo or just copy what I did basically and call it good. Okay, the next one here is a chest piece underneath his right ear. So I just used Celtic Tribal number 12. It's hard to see on the screen here, but I just uh, elongated it to get kind of the tall part of the chest piece and then duplicated it and then uh, squished it down and made it a little bit wide for the base of the chest piece. And then we went with text number 10 here for uh, some script on the left hand side of his body. I forget what's actually written there but I just went with this one because I needed to save some tattoos. 
onto the back side here. O'Malley has some sort of a family crest here on the upper left back. I'll throw a picture on the screen for reference. For the yellow part here, I went with Shapes32 and flipped it vertically by pressing triangle if you're on PlayStation. And then Miscellaneous 17 I used twice, uh, one on each side, just flipped horizontally so they're symmetrical to basically get the green parts. There's no good green color for tattoos in this game so that's the best we can kind of do. And then uh, a couple more fantasy number four tattoos just to get the little red animals. I don't know if they're bears or what but these ones are dragons close enough. And then the next one I think is another tattoo, uh, this time on the left hand side of his head, just under his ear, it's hard to see but I'll throw a picture of the tattoo. I think it was uh, the celebration he did, the fadeaway jumper celebration. I don't remember which fight it was the from the Wineland or Almeida, maybe even his last one. Then we've got the 6-9 tattoo on his right shoulder. We went with Clairvaux font again for that one. Uh, we got a snake on the left hand side of his torso, I guess. For the head we went with this bird head, Animals 21, flipped it horizontally and then just stretched it out so it kind of looked like the head of a snake. And for the body we went with Irizumi number 4, flipped it horizontally, made it a little bit bigger and then lined it up so it looks like the bird head is the head of the snake. Another one on this time the right hand side of his back, old school number five, close enough. Now on to the facial hair. So the facial hair that we chose basically just has a mustache and then a chin hair portion. So we have to supplement uh, with tattoos to do the entire uh, chin strap kind of area. For anyone with uh, darker facial hair, I kind of use the same method. I start with Irizumi number three, which is what we're looking at right now just to kind of get the basic shape of the hair and then it adds a little bit of texture so I bring down the opacity to zero and then just uh, bump it up until it just kind of sort of starts looking like hair and then I come in later and uh, fill it in with more color where needed. So here on the mustache I use some extra Irizumi shapes just to add a little bit more uh, hair where the facial hair in game was lacking just to make it a little bit thicker basically. And then like I said we come back in with more color where needed uh, to add a little bit more darkness so we're using shapes 181 in this case. And then basically what we're doing is uh, positioning them in a way where they overlay the Irizumi tattoos. And then you just kind of want to mess around with the opacity until you get a the look or darkness that you're going for and don't worry if uh, you don't get it perfect it's never gonna look as good as uh, actual facial hair is gonna look the main idea is just so uh, when you look at it from a distance it kind of looks like facial hair moving on O'Malley has very distinct bags under his eyes probably even a little bit darker than what I ended up going with here you could make them slightly darker uh, shapes 126 which is the faded black half moons work well for these now on to the arm tattoos, the upper arm portion I composed with Irizumi number 5. Basically flipped it vertically by pressing triangle. So we get the kind of circular snake part at the top and then I faded it, uh, brought the opacity down a little bit. Text number 6 I put on his bicep. Not necessary because you're barely ever going to see it but he does have some script there. Skulls number 5, slightly upsized and then brought down an opacity just to cover most of his left forearm. And then fantasy tattoo number one I put uh, on the outside of his arm just to fill in uh, the extra space. And that's basically it for the left arm so we'll move on to the right. Uh, and then same thing for the right bicep as the left. I just went with text one in this case. Next is the word family written on his right forearm or on the inside of it uh, f-a-m-i-l-y and then for the font choice I went with Duke DeBerry font. I won't go through each of the letters you can kind of see how it sits there uh, and then on the outside of the right forearm miscellaneous number seven kind of starts at his elbow goes down into the glove and then overlaid with uh, some flowers. I don't think these are actually colored on his body but these are the closest we can kind of go with. 
and then old school number seven on the back part of his upper right arm onto the legs in most of his fights uh depending on the commission o'malley has ankle wrap so for these i just used uh, some quick colored shapes lots of people don't think they look very good and i wouldn't disagree but if you want to put them on there is your option on to the shorts o'malley uses the long valley tudo shorts uh, and then for calves, your options are white or black. Unfortunately, we can't pick colored shorts. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm on a second account here, so I don't have uh, all my other vanity items unlocked. So I can't really show you any of the other gear that we could put them in. Or the emotes for that matter, because there is a signature O'Malley emotes in the game. So if you have those unlocked or if you want to buy them, you'll just have to search through the list. Because I think there's ones for pre-fight, post-fight and uh, taunts as well but yeah that was my uh, sugar show calf let me know what you think of it and uh, i hope to get more of these uh, episodes done soon